Hey everyone, it's Mr. Mott. What we want to do today is go over our electrolysis lab, the reactions, uh, and also be able to predict uh, which redox reactions will happen um, in electrolysis. So our picture here shows an electrolytic cell, which is typically just one electrolyte, one solution, and then we have our electrodes in there connected to a battery uh, or some type of power source. So the first solution we're going to look at is a copper bromide solution. And what we want to think about is what is in the uh, electrolyte, what is in the solution. What we have is we have copper 2 plus ions, we have the bromide ions, and we have water. And uh, what we want to think about is what could each of those species do as far as oxidation reduction, what would they tend to do? So looking at the copper ions first, Copper really would only undergo reduction because with a 2 plus, it's not going to want to lose any more electrons. It would only want to gain. So if this reduction reaction would occur, this would be our reaction. Um, and then uh, we would look on a list of standard reduction potentials, and we see that it's a positive 0.34 volts. Then we'd look at bromide. And if we look on a standard reduction chart, what we would see is this. Uh, reaction. And so the issue with this is this is not uh, a what we have in solution. We don't have brom bromine in solution in the electrolyte. We have the bromide ion. So what we have to do is flip this equation around um, and then we need to change the sign on our reduction potential. Uh, so what I've done is I flipped this around and now it represents uh, the oxidation that could possibly occur um, in solution, the bromide ions turning into bromine, um, and uh, and so we flip the sign, and so I've got my standard oxidation potential at negative uh, 1.07. I know on the other screen it was 1.06, but the, all the charts are the charts can be slightly different. The next two reactions that we that we have are the reduction and the oxidation of water, and these are a little bit more different than than the norm uh, because you don't just flip around one equation, they actually occur a little bit differently. So uh, the uh, third equation from the top there, uh, starting with two waters plus two electrons, uh, will produce hydrogen gas and four hydroxide ions. That would be as written on a reduction potential, and that's uh, a value of negative 0.83 volts. The oxidation, however, you would see it with the reaction flipped uh, with our two waters on the right-hand side of the equation, um, but we had to flip around to turn it into an oxidation. And this is sort of the way it makes the most sense to me, because what I want to think about in this case is what combination of oxidation and reduction could be taking place that would uh, require the least amount of energy from the battery to make happen. So let's take a look at uh, our first two reactions and see if copper and bromine uh, may do um, our redox. Maybe this is what's happening. So we're going to add up our oxidation and reduction to get our E total, and that comes out to be about a negative 0.73. These values will be negative, and the negative indicates that this is not a spontaneous reaction. That's the reason we need the battery to make it happen. So what this really tells us is that we need at least 0.73 volts from our battery uh, to make this reaction happen, this set of oxidation reduction happen. Uh, but we can't stop there. We need to look at the other combinations that may occur. We could look at the oxidation of the bromide ions and the reduction of water. Your E total adding up uh, those values would be negative 1.9 volts. Then we can also look at the, uh, the reduction and oxidation of just water by itself. Adding up our reduction and our oxidation potentials, we get negative 1.96 volts. And then we could also consider the reduction of your copper ions and the oxidation of water. That comes out to negative 0.89 volts. So who wins? Well, it's going to be the least negative of them, and that's going to be uh, the reduction of your copper ions and your oxidation of your bromide ions. Because that's going to be the smallest amount of energy that the battery uh, needs to uh, impart to make uh, this reaction happen. And if we look at the, uh, our picture again, uh, in lab we notice that 
we had a red solid forming on one of our electrodes, and that's going to be the copper. And then on your other electrode, we noticed a yellow liquid forming, and that would be bromine forming at that electrode. And so lots of physical evidence that would support our calculations, and that's always a great thing uh, to see. Next, we're going to look at a solution of sodium bromide, and, uh, uh, and let's see what that looked like. Uh, we've got uh, our picture with some of our results on there, and again, we have a yellow liquid forming on, on the left electrode and your anode, and at the cathode, we actually saw bubbles in this case. Um, so looking at all of our reactions again, the bottom three reactions are the same as last time. Uh, the only one that's different is the reduction. So instead of copper, we have sodium. So our reduction potential for sodium uh, would be about negative 2.71. Um, and then we'd also, if that reduction happened, we'd be forming sodium in its element form or sodium metal. Uh, that's very reactive with water, and we didn't really see any, uh, any sort of mini explosions or anything like that that you might expect if you've got some background knowledge on what sodium does in water. But anyway, let's take a look at the reduction potentials, and your E total in this case would be a whopping negative 3.78 volts. That would be your, uh, your total when you add up the, uh, your potentials from uh, that set of oxidation reduction reactions. So I'm guessing that's probably not going to happen. That's a pretty big value. Looking at our next two again, these were the same as before. Um, and so what we can take a look at is all the different combinations. The fourth combination would be the reduction of sodium and the oxidation of, the oxidation of water. And that's also a very big value. So we look at all of our E totals and we're going to pick the smallest one. And so that would be the oxidation of your bromide ions and the reduction of water. And let's see if this makes sense visually. So we notice that, for instance, again, we saw a yellow liquid forming at the anode, and that's going to be your bromine. Uh, the bubbles that we saw were your hydrogen. And, uh, and so really strong indications from observations that, um, that we did indeed have those two reactions uh, forming. The other thing that we did as well, which uh, I didn't mention before, at the cathode where we saw the bubbles, we also tested the pH at, at, both, uh, at both. And so one of the things that we should have noticed as well was that the, um, at that cathode, at that electrode, we would notice that the solution was basic. And when we see in the reduction of water, we see that the other product besides hydrogen gas were your hydroxide ions that also add some evidence to, um, to our, uh, add some evidence to uh, the fact that we think that the reduction of water did happen because we produced hydrogen gas and we, uh, and we made the hydroxide ions, which made these, uh, the liquid basic at that, uh, at that electrode. Hopefully that helps you with uh, some of these predictions. Um, take care.